Hello again. It's sometimes claimed that before the advent of the electric telegraph, at about the same time that Queen Victoria came to the throne, information could be transmitted no faster than a galloping horse or sailing ship. I want you to consider, though, the following incident, which occurred 40 years before the first practical um, electric telegraph was introduced. In the late 18th century, conditions on board British ships of the Navy were pretty appalling. The food was bad, living quarters dreadful, and the discipline absolutely harsh. Mutiny was a constant fear amongst officers of the Navy. The prospect that their men would rise up against them and take over the ship, as had happened during the mutiny on the Bounty in 1789. In the spring of 1797, HMS Royal Sovereign was moored in the southern English port of Portsmouth, near that part of the Channel of Sea between Hampshire coast and the Isle of Wight, which is known as the Solent. A sailor on HMS Royal Sovereign told one of his officers privately that a mutiny was indeed about to break out on the ship. The warning was taken seriously, for the men of this and other ships had lately drawn up petitions uh, which they had sent to the King, complaining about conditions on board the ships of the Royal Navy. Unrest and rebellion can be contagious, and so once it was known that one ship might be on the point of mutiny, it was vital to seek the advice of the Admiralty in London, so that orders might be received regarding the best way to deal with such a dangerous situation. On the 1st of April 1797, a signal was dispatched to London as a matter of urgency. It was brief and to the point, reading, Mutiny Brewing in Spithead, which was what that part of the coast was known as. The astonishing thing is the rapidity with which this brief message travelled the 70 miles to London. It took just three minutes from sending it until it was being read in London. The signal had travelled between the two cities at 1,400 miles per hour, twice the speed of sound, roughly the speed at which uh, Concord used to travel. How was this incredible speed of communication achieved? I'll say, tell you now, by means of a very strange system which few people today have even heard of. It was nothing more elaborate than a chain of towers set on prominent hilltops a few miles apart. Each tower was equipped with uh, wooden arms, which could be used to send semaphore messages to the next station. In this way, a message could be spelled out and then sent to the next tower in the chain, where it would then be read and passed along. The thumbnail to this video shows just such a tower. It was a Frenchman called Claude Chappé, who devised the first such chain of towers at the end of the 18th century. Napoleon was really keen on the idea, partly because of the military value, and by the early 1800s, a network of these towers stretched from Amsterdam to Venice, all across France, Italy, Belgium and so on. This was very useful for sending military information across Europe, of course, but the mechanical telegraph was also used to send news, weather reports, and even the results of the national lottery. It became, in effect, a primitive kind of internet. The British had their own network, which ran from Plymouth to London and then up to Norfolk. The Admiralty used it to keep in touch with major ports. Some hills between London and the English coast are still known as Telegraph Hill, because such Te semaphore towers stood there. In London, for example, Telegraph Hill Park in the New Cross Gate District is named after the Telegraph Tower erected on the ridge, which rises 150 feet above central London. Even with all the development of the area during the Victorian era, there's still a clear view across the whole of London from that point. Fifteen telegraph stations link the Admiralty in London with the Port of Deal, which lies about 70 miles as the crow flies from the centre of the capital. Before the building of the telegraph line in 1795, it would have taken a day's hard riding 
to carry a message between London and Deal. Even then it would have been a remarkable horse which could have covered the distance in the space of 24 hours because by road the distance is closer to 90 miles and 70. It is now that we encounter for the first time the truly astonishing speed at which optical telegraphs were able to transmit complicated information from one place to another, which might be many miles away. It took a mere 60 seconds to send a simple signal from London to Deal. We pause for a moment to consider the implications of the fact that a signal could travel the 70 miles which separates London from Deal in just one minute. A very basic calculation reveals something which leaves us gaping open mounted in disbelief. If a signal travels 70 miles in one minute, then it must be travelling at a speed of 4,200 miles per hour, more than six times the speed of sound. For the 18th century, this was, to say the least of it, quite an achievement. Telegraph towers of this kind are described in a number of fictional works of fantasy, without anybody suspecting for a moment that they existed in real life. The Discworld novels of Terry Pratchett contain a perfect example of this sort of thing. <clears throat> Although the Discworld, disc world, I should say, novels began as pure fantasy, they gradually developed over the years until some aspects of them were indistinguishable from steampunk. Indeed, the 40th book in the series, published in 2013, is called Racing Steam and actually features a steam engine. In earlier Discworld books, a chain of mechanical signalling stations makes an ap appearance. The clacks are rickety wooden towers which have at the top a display of shutters. These can be either open or closed and the various combinations are used to encode messages. The signal stations are on flat ground positioned about 8 miles from each other. Although when they are first mentioned, the clacks are really a type of telegraph system, they later evolve into something like a rudimentary internet. As the system grows, it becomes automated with information being stored on punched tapes. A clockwork mechanism is also used. The um, clacks are eventually able even to transmit pictures by breaking them down digitally into signals, something which would actually be feasible, although rather labor laborious. In going postal, we are told that on the Tump, the old castle mound across the river, the big tower, one end of the grand trunk that wound more than 2,000 miles across the entire continent of Genua, glittered with semaphore. The electric telegraph, when it arrived, put an end to semaphore towers, but it's curious to, to reflect on the fact that Britain and the rest of Europe were once connected by a forerunner of the internet which worked entirely without the need for any electricity. <laughs>